Hi all, this is Once and Future Gamer and welcome to another Pokemon Challenge. Last time we had a run through Pokemon Black as we set out to see if I could beat that with just a single Minchino. A run that got insanely brutal towards the back end. Let's mix it up. It is my first Gen 3 challenge for a while as we see if I can beat Pokemon Emerald using just a single Aaron. Now then, Aaron. We have a 330 base stat total, with nearly a third of that being our physical defence. You might expect our speed to be low, and you're right, but our special stats could be worse. Our physical attack also isn't too bad. We are rock and steel type, so we have two four times weaknesses to fighting and ground, as well as a single weakness to water. We resist normal, flying, rock, bug, psychic, ice and dragon. Move wise, we get some decent options via level up. Nah, not really. About the only thing that's going to be useful for the time being is Mud Slap for the Electric Gym. Metal Claw is about the best Steel type move we get out of the both of them. If we get the Rock Head ability, I might get some use out of Double Edge, but otherwise, nah. Via TM, we do get some decent coverage with Rock moves, Normal moves, Ground, Electric, Water, and Flying moves too. We do get a fighting type move, but unfortunately, it's Rock Smash, so it's firmly in the camp of might as well not bother. Earthquake Return, do we not get Rock Slide as a TM in this game? Rats! It's only a post-game tutorial move. We do get Rollout via Tutor though, so maybe I could use that. I probably won't, but I could. Predictions, Rock Gym shouldn't be too bad, Fighting Gym might be dreadful, Electric Gym might not be the best, but everything up until the Psychic Gym might be smooth sailing. We've done Emerald with a 4 times ground weakness before, and it makes the Psychic Gym not fun. Juan and Wallace might cause some issues with their water types. The rules. In combat, I can only use Aaron. Other Pokemon will be needed for HMs but unable to fight. I only held items and Pokeballs in battle, but I can heal outside of combat. And last of all, no glitches or exploits. If you do enjoy what you see, then like, subscribe and ring that bell. I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Torchic with Aaron, so that I can do the whole run with it. I chose to replace Torchic so that the rival would have Mudkip. Neither of them makes great use of their primary typing in this game, but Marsh Stomp's ground moves are going to be more of a threat than Combuskin's fighting moves. Largely because I don't think Combuskin gets any as the game goes on. We get the Aaron from Professor Birch and fight off the Zigzagoon that wants to maul him to death. At least, I am assuming that's what happens. Aaron takes a few hits from the Zigzagoon, but given we quad resist normal, it's not exactly an issue. I think we'll have bigger challenges than the Route 1 Zigzagoon. But Birch is eternally grateful, and as a result, he decides that we are going to be given this Aaron as a reward. I take a few moments to think of a nickname, and then go for Arok rather than Aaron. It's probably more of a steel type than rock, but what can you do? We've got the sturdy ability, absolutely useless in this gen, and the calm nature, which is increased special defence and lowered attack. Now, our special defence is naturally low, so that's not too bad. A bit extra could do me a lot of good. But decreased attack isn't pleasant at all, given we are a physical attacker. I will have to make do. Let us go and murder some Puccienna for the attack EVs. Then, we'll have to make do the best we can with what we've got. If I wanted to train the special defence stat, I'd have to go fight Lotads to the west of Old Ale Town. That town that everyone forget exists. It's like Cherry Grove City, a first town that you go through and then never go back to because there's no gym. Most gens have one. It's not long before I go fight May. I'll do this before I grind up too high so that I can catch some pickup Zigzagoon and get free items while doing so. It's not quite as broken as Ruby, Sapphire, Fire Red and Leaf Green where you can get rare candies and PP ups at a low level but still. Anyway, May. This fight is about what you'd expect, as her Mudkip doesn't have any water attacks just yet, and as a result, it can't really hurt us with Tackle. It just bounces off our hard skin as we tackle it back, one of them missing because, of course, it was Tackle pre-Gen 5. 
We crit our last attack though and drop Mudkip hard to give us a win, which is good because it had started to use Growl on us. I keep EV training, getting some special defence EVs from the low tads to the west, all while also knocking out more Poochina. I really wish I gotten a better nature, but there is no use complaining about it right now. Like I said, better special defence isn't too bad. I just wish it hadn't been at the expense of our attack. I do like Aaron, you know. I think the whole line is a really cool design and it's up there as one of my favourites in Generation 3. Most of my favourites in Gen 3 seem to follow a theme. There's Flygon, Swampert, the Aaron line, Metagross. They're all pretty mineral based. There's also Deoxys, my favourite mythical, but that's decidedly not a rock, ground or steel type. Though, considering the Delta episode and the meteorite storyline in Auras, it could be. Our first major fight is the Rock Gym, and as we have Metal Claw, I doubt this is going to be particularly rough, especially with the training we've been doing. Plus, while doing a bit of research, I did discover that her Pokemon don't have any ground moves. I thought one of the Geodude had magnitude. This just went from possibly tricky to exceptionally doable. Let's talk about that. Geodude number one gets struck with Metal Claw. We are a bit higher leveled, but I had a bit of time to fight the trainers while I wasn't able to record, so I did that instead. It gets struck out with a single Metal Claw, and the second one goes down the same way. Not only that, but we do get an attack buff from the second Metal Claw. Nose Pass is more annoying as it survives our Metal Claw on a sliver and hits Rock Tomb, which doesn't do a whole lot to us. She starts spamming heals on it for the next two turns and we don't get another attack buff, meaning there's not much we can do about it, but eventually we take it down for a win. I beat Fire Red with a single nose pass in February. I remember that very, very well. As we leave Rustboro, there is a fight with May, and I should be careful because I think she will have a water move on her Mudkip this time possibly, and that is a worrying prospect. Not as worrying as the Cycling Road one when she has a ground move, but still. Anyway, she begins with Torkoal, and when the fight begins, I fire a Mud Slap at the Fire Turtle to lower its accuracy. It does about as much as might be expected, given the lower power of the move. It does go for Curse, but we hit a crit headbutt to put it on red health, while she goes for Curse again, and we finally finish that off with Mud Slap. Mudkip is next, and it survives our headbutt, yet, rather than attacking, it goes for Growl, and we duly crack it with another headbutt to take it down and win. The Fighting Gym is next, and this one might be tricky, so we are going to have to keep getting stronger. We are quad weak to fighting, and Brawly's Makahita can be annoying if it gets the chance to spam bulk up. The annoying thing is, I have used Makahita in challenges twice, and it's really not that good, apart from when Brawly uses it, and then it turns into the Terminator. Anyway, he begins with Machop, who survives our headbutt, unfortunately, and then smacks us with Seismic Toss. Now that could have been massively worse, so I'll take it. We take it down with another headbutt to put us one up in the fight. Meditite is second, and if we keep on attacking, it can't hurt us as the only attacking move it has is Focus Punch. How did Brawly become a gym leader again? Just asking. It survives our headbutt, and I know he is going to heal, so I sneak an Iron Defense while he uses a Super Potion. And then we just use our headbutt again and again over and over while he burns another super potion and eventually we take the win. Makahita is last and we smack into it with headbutt while it goes for bulk up and eats the citrus berry to heal. I don't think we are going to knock it out here and I'm right as it goes for reversal and we survive on 6 HP. No doubt thanks to that iron defence. That was a good decision and thankfully we get a high damage roll the next turn and take it down with another headbutt. I am glad this fight isn't later in the game. The Cycling Road Rival fight is next and I'm not looking forward to this one, so I make sure I get plenty of training in. Marsh Stomp is likely to be a pretty immovable object and I don't think we're going to be able to one hit that. I think being able to do it in two hits will probably be our best outcome. Let's find out. 
Lombre is first, and I figure it can't hurt us that much. So, I go for iron defence while it goes for growl. Not good, but we will have to deal. We do get hit with two absorbs while going for another iron defence before we can land two headbutts and take it out of the fight. At least it didn't have a water move. Marsh Stomp is next and we do less than half with headbutts before it goes for bide. Oh okay, I do a third iron defence and then because I know it's not going to do much damage, I use Mud Slap to wreck its accuracy on the next turn. It unleashes energy, then survives another headbutt before missing Mud Shot, thank you Mud Slap, and we take it down hard. Slugma is last and although it hits Ember, it doesn't do much and we down it with two Mud Slaps. The Electric Gym is liable to be annoying because the Electric Gym usually is in Pokemon Emerald. There is risk of static and there's also Watson's Magneton, which, due to being part Steel type, isn't always the easiest thing to take out. Plus, it likes to Thunder Wave, which isn't pleasant. I make a first effort just to see what happens, but it doesn't go entirely well, as we are outsped by Voltorb and get hit with a Crit Spark, which is just plain unhelpful. We also can't one-hit it with Headbutt, but we do get him to waste a Super Potion, and we take it out on the next turn. Electrike is next, and we one-hit that with Headbutt, but unfortunately... We get paralysed by Static, which is bad, going into Magneton, who can two-hit us with Shockwave. We could probably two-hit Magneton though, so I might use a Cherry Berry and see if we can do better. I make a few attempts and then conclude that maybe I should get a few more levels. We are getting outsped by not only Voltorb, but Magneton and Main Ectric too, so I think we might need to improve our stats a bit. It becomes a battle of attrition otherwise, and since we're weaker special defensively than physically defensively, it's a problem when getting hit by Shockwave. We do have Mud Slap, but it's only good for damage because, even though it lowers accuracy, Shockwave never misses. I come back a few levels later and see to try again. I'm curious to see if things will be simpler this time. I mean, we weren't far off with some stuff last time, so hopefully this is a tipping point. At level 37, we can outspeed Voltorb and we drop it with Headbutt for a knockout. That is at least a good start. Electrike just about survives Mud Slap and hits Shockwave, but it doesn't do massive damage. He heals it, but we take it out with two more Mud Slaps. Magneton is third and we are faster this time, meaning we can too hit that opponent with Mud Slap, though it does use Thunder Wave and make us eat our berry. We hit Main Ectric with Mud Slap. It is still faster after it goes for Howl. We do get blasted with Shockwave, but a Headbutt takes it down and we get the win. Phew! That was intense. It should be smooth sailing from here for a bit. Next is the maxi fight on Mount Chimney, and this will probably be one of those times I really wish I had a consistent attack buffing move. Metal Claw can raise our attack, but it can, quite crucially and frequently, not do it too. Gem 3, the year that stuff escalated drastically with Pokemon villains. We went from, we're going to steal Pokemon to, we're going to erupt a volcano! This doesn't go to plan. We get intimidated and also sand attacked, which is definitely not good. Versus Mighty Ena, we keep hitting Metal Claws, but we never get the attack rise we need. After two of them, we get Mighty Ena into red health, but Maxi heals and we have to hit some more to drop it. And Camerupt is then where everything goes wrong, as it takes less than half from our headbutt and then deals massive damage with magnitude. I try for another headbutt, hoping for a flinch, but no joy as we miss the move and it takes us down with another magnitude. I go again and there is two routes for dealing with Camerupt. Iron Defence for taking less damage and also Mud Slap to do to it what my Tiena did to us. That might be what I need to focus on. I'm torn between replacing Mud Slap with Dig at the moment. Because Dig is weaker in this gen than most others. It still takes a few efforts, but eventually I get a run where we do come out triumphant. It's an unconventional victory, but still, they all count. I go for three Iron Defences versus Mightyena, but in the opening salvo of the fight, we get hit with six 
count them, six sand attacks, which is pretty not good. And before you know it, when we do go on the offensive, we are flailing wildly and missing attack after attack after attack, which is pretty bad. I think we are probably going to lose this effort, even if we do connect and attack. And then, Mighty Ina uses Raw to force us out into the HM Slave I needed to get to this point. I let Mighty Ina knock out Zigzagoon with Bite, and then, when we begin, we're no longer intimidated. We do get hit with a sand attack, but we can connect some headbutts to knock Mighty Ina out, and that's what we need. Camerupt does avoid a headbutt and hit a magnitude 5, but it doesn't do too much, and we just keep hitting headbutts from then on out to get it into a corner. He does try healing it twice with super potions, but that cannot save him, and a crit eventually brings down the volcanic camel at long, long last. I can breathe a huge sigh of relief. Last is Zubat, and we crash a crit headbutt into it to bring it down and take the victory. The fire gym is next, and this could go two ways. It could be easy, it could be rough, so I'm curious about that. At least the rock doesn't have to worry about a trapped in this run due to being female, and that is a favoured tactic of Flannery. I'm still worried about the camera up though, I suppose. That does turn out to be a very valid concern, but not for the reasons I thought. Nummel is a one hit with headbutt, giving us an early win. Next is Slugma, and in case Camerupt has a ground move, I go for Iron Defence while it goes for Light Screen, which means nothing to us. We take it down with three Mud Slaps while she uses a Potion, and also it misses Overheat, which is a bullet dodged. Versus Camerupt, we land a Headbutt, but don't get the flinch, and as a result, it hits us hard with Overheat, doing well over half our health. That is pretty worrying, especially as we go into Torkoal. Mud Slap does maybe a quarter, but it doesn't miss overheat and blasts us with the move, meaning we go down hard. Okay, that didn't go to plan. Let's try this a few more times and see how it plays out. I make a few attempts and then I realise my strategy of trying to lower Torkoal's accuracy isn't going to work thanks to the white smoke ability. And versus that opponent, we cannot do too much at this point. I think I'm going to do two things. Grind up a few more levels and also I might go get return to increase our power, given we are not hitting particularly hard at the moment. I come back at level 50. I have return and I'm prepared to use it. I think this should make things a lot easier if I'm honest. And it might seem over leveled for this point, but believe me, I am going to need it for the latter bit of the game, particularly everything after and including the psychic gym. Nummel is a one hit with return, no surprise there. Slugma is also a one hit with return and they were never issues before so I don't see why they would be now. Camerupt is also a one hit with return which is pretty massive because it means we're full health going into Torkoal who I doubt we will one hit. I am proved right as it survives return on about a third then hits body slam which we shrug off. Not a good idea on her part as we resist it, and then we take it down with another return. Four badges down, now we're cooking. Normal gym is next, and it's time to fight Dad. This is a fight that shouldn't be hard on paper, but when there's a slacking involved, there's always an element of risk, because that thing is a monster. I saw the good and bad of slacking many months ago, when I did challenge this game with a single one. No TMs or HMs and no held items. Yes, it's exactly as bad as it sounds. I was watching a few of the older challengers from back then recently and I like to think the quality has gone up somewhat since then. Spinder is first and we smash into that with return to put us one up in the fight. Spinder can be unpredictable since it likes to use teeter dance. Next is the dreaded slacking, and on the turns when it doesn't truant, I go for iron defence, and it's probably good that I do, since on both of the first two turns it can attack, it goes for counter, and that would have messed us up. Return does slightly over half, but thanks to the berry, the second attack drops slacking into healing range, and Norman drops a hyper potion on it for a heal, prompting us to wear it down again. 
We do get hit with a feint attack, but we do drop it fairly easily after that, as it never gets the chance to attack us again. Next is Vigoroff, and that goes down to a single return before Linoon is last, and it is faster than us. Landing an ineffective headbutt, but unfortunately, it also survives return. He heals it, and we have to take it down with Metal Claw and return, shaking off a facade in the process. The next major fight is the Weather Institute Rival 1. It is raining here, and I always wonder now if it is to showcase weather mechanics and abilities. It might be, it might not be. Anyway, Lombre is first and goes for Fake Out for a massive one point of damage, which isn't a big issue, and then an Absorb, which doesn't particularly hurt either, before we smash into it with Return. Next is Marsh Stomp, and we also down that with a single return to take it down hard. Slugma is last, and it won't be able to do too much to us, so we take that down with return too. The next confrontation is in the Flying Gym, and I can see Skarmory being a possible problem, but I decide that I'm going to replace Mud Slap with Rock Tomb, and that might hurt it more than Metal Claw. It is Stab, so... Rock Tomb isn't great in this gen, hence my earlier comments about wanting Rock Slide, but it's about the best we get, unless I want Rollout, which I don't particularly. I think Altaria knows Earthquake, which could be rough, but at least we should be able to hurt that easier than Skarmory. This fight turns out to be excruciating. It took six whole minutes to lose. Swablu isn't bad, we take it out with a Metal Claw. Unfortunately, we don't get the attack buff, which is something I'm sick of noticing at this point. Altaria is next, and it survives return before hitting Earthquake for about a third of our health. We are 25 levels higher, and it isn't stab, but even so, wow, that's unsettling. We take it out at the second attempt, though, before things get out of hand. For the first time in recorded history... Pelipper doesn't use Protect on the first turn and goes for Supersonic instead. Then it spams Protect, meaning that we hit ourselves twice in confusion and the other times get blocked by its defensive move. I truly hate Pelipper in this game. Now, I do want to use Wingull at some point in a challenge though. We take it down eventually. And then, there's Skarmory. Now, we get hit with six sand attacks, so that might give you an idea of what happens, and given our two best moves for landing, damage on this thing are Rock Tomb and Metal Claw. Rock Tomb misses like five times in a row. Mind you, it is capable of doing that without sand attack. Why did I get this move again? That already seems like an error of judgement on my part. Well, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Skarmory keeps spamming sand attacks, we keep missing attacks, and then, when our accuracy is wrecked, she starts using Steel Wing. Now, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but we take a lot of them, and it is death by a thousand cuts. We do eventually land the requisite blows to take it down into red health, but unfortunately, she heals it, and then gets a defensive buff shortly after from Steel Wing. So, it is a case of when we're going to lose and not if. This is absolutely soul-destroying. It takes so long to lose, and when it finally happens, it is a massive relief as we go crashing to the mat. Let's try that again. I mean, if we can land some blows earlier on Skarmory, we might be okay. Maybe. I mean, all we can do is try. We do come into Skarmory in a similar position as we did before, but we get hit with less sand attacks this time, and Rock Tomb only misses one time in five, which is handy. She does survive the second Rock Tomb on red health, forcing a heal, but the fourth and fifth time the move lands, we take it down. Oh, that was the reason we learned Rock Tomb. Tropius is fifth, and we down it with a return for a victory. There are more fights ahead, and the next one I decide to do is the optional rival fight outside the Lily Cove City Mall. We'll do this before I head to Mount Pyre and then back to Mount Chimney. The mall fight is always handy to do because it gives us access to buy stuff. Tropius is first and we smash into it with return. That's one down. 
Next is Marsh Stump, and we also crash that down with Return. Two down. Not hard so far, but Ludicolo is next, and we also take that out with Return for a victory. Before, we have to face Slugma, and we drop it with our last attack to give us victory. While I do go through Mount Chimney and the Magma Hideout, let us talk about what is ongoing with the channel. On Sunday, as there has been for the last several weeks, there was episode 10 of Hogwarts Legacy, and I have not played much of that of late due to time constraints, which is unfortunate. Guess I'm not getting as much time lately. There was also episodes 20 and 21 of Gold Univer, as we battled on with the plot and experienced some developments, especially as we fought both N and Whitney, amongst others. There was also episodes 41 and 42 of Skyward Sword, which was the finale of that playthrough. Loved it. Well, loved the story. Let's leave it at that. I don't think I need to add the second part of that sentence. I've said it enough times already. Next Zelda game I recorded the first episode of the other day is going to be Ocarina of Time. And I'm so ready for that as it is one of my most favourite games of all time. There was also episode 10 of the Resident Evil 2 remake, which culminated the Leon A playthrough. I'll be back to that at some point in the future with the second half of the story. Resident Evil 4 remake next week then, I guess, since I've got 8 episodes loaded up in the bag. Again, not getting as much time to play as I'd like. I've only gotten to the castle so far. Right then, Pokemon Challengers. Rodent Month came to an end and this is the first weekend of Second Chance Month. Next time we return to Generation 5 as I see if I can beat Pokemon White with just a single P-Dove. And I am really not looking forward to that. But this one was originally suggested for Bird Pokemon Month and I might as well do it. There are only three challenges planned this month. I'll tell you what the last one is since I'm here. It's a fire red challenge and it will be with just a single Pikachu. As always, if you have any ideas for future challenges, head to the comment section down below or follow the links in the description to my Twitter or my Discord. Always interested to hear what you have in mind. I might do a submission month later on in the year where I only do viewer submissions that don't really have a theme attached to them. I do have more of them lined up for the next third of the year though. Also, while you're down there, if you want to support the channel, there is a Patreon link down below too, if you want to support the channel financially. If you don't, or can't, then all you can do, tell a friend, help the channel grow. Word of mouth, powerful, powerful thing. Either way, thank you so very much for being here, thank you for your support, and we're going to return to the regular content right now. Maxi is next, and I'm not looking forward to this. We should be able to come out the other side, I guess, but this is going to be rough. That Mightyena makes things so awkward with the Intimidate, and the camera up has shown how annoying it can be. Actually, this isn't that bad if I'm honest. We smash into Mightyena with return and do about three quarters of its health before it hits Scary Face. That is unfortunate, but it does beat Sand Attack. He heals it, but we drop it with a crit metal claw on the next turn, which is good. Camerupt is faster now, thanks to Scary Face, and uses Amnesia, but we do massive damage with Return. He heals it with a Super Potion on the next turn, which doesn't do him a lot of good, as we go for another Return and drop it. Crobat is last, and spoiler alert, we get outsped. To be fair, I think we'd probably be outsped if we weren't under the influence of Scary Face, and we also get hit with Confuse Ray as I try to go for a Rock Tomb. We get hit with a Bite, and then we miss Rock Tomb. I know, right? Rock Tomb missing? Has such a thing ever happened before? We do eventually take it down with two of them after shaking the Confusion off and being confused again. Easier than I thought. Next is the dreaded Emerald Psychic Gym. Actually, I've had one easy fight in this in all the runs I've done, when I did it with Catnia. Every other time has been absolutely horrific. We do resist Psychic though, so hopefully we can take Claydol down quickly before it messes us up too badly with Earthquakes. Hopefully. I think it might take a few attempts if I'm honest. 
At least if we can get Claydol to go down relatively quickly, the rest might not be too bad. We still have Metal Claw, so we might be able to mess up Soul Rock and Lunatone. This always puts me on edge. Believe it or not, it was a first time win. Zatu downs Wynaut with Psychic before we hit Claydol with Return. Unfortunately, Claydol survives Return and we have to tank an Earthquake for over half our health. A second one will end us. Zatu goes for Calm Mind and we target Claydol again, taking it down before it can end us. Zatu goes for another Calm Mind as Sol Rock comes out and we take Zatu out with a blessed crit return. I'm not sure if that crit was needed there, but it'll do. Sol Rock goes for Sunny Day and Lunatone comes out. I don't want to risk taking a Sun Boosted Flamethrower and so I hit Sol Rock with Metal Claw to down it in one hit, which is pleasant, before Lunatone goes for Calm Mind. We take that down then with a single Metal Claw, giving us a welcome, easy win. Phew! The next major fight I'm willing to talk about is the Archie fight under the sea. And I initially suspect that we will have similar problems here to what we did versus Maxi, only with no ground moves. Actually, this should be way easier. And plus, Sharpedo doesn't have any water moves in this game. This is a very weird fight, as we go for return on Mighty Ena, and thanks to the Intimidate, it survives quite hardly and uses Scary Face. He heals it on the next turn, and then we hit a Metal Claw to try and get some attack back. It survives and lands Swagger, which will power us up, no problem. We fight through Confusion and land another Metal Claw to end it. Crobat lands Bite, but it is also a one-hit takedown with Rock Tomb before Sharpedo is last. It hits another Swagger to confuse us once again and we hit ourselves, but we do shrug it off. It uses Taunt and that backfires as we strike return to knock it out. The Water Gym is next and given this is only the first of two water type specialists in this game, I'm less than confident. Juan's Kingdra is always, always, always horrific to beat thanks to it usually spamming double team and rest. Worst case scenario, I could learn Aerial Ace, but I've really got to have a think about my moves at some point besides return. I have the Earthquake TM2 that I might use somewhere. First effort versus Juan goes really bad. We are slower than Love Disc. That's not too worrying. Love Disc is all speed and little else, but we get hit with Water Pulse, which doesn't do too much damage before we take it out with Return. Next is Celio, and we are at least faster, but we cannot take it out with Return, and we get hit with Water Pulse and also Confused, which isn't good, as we do hit ourselves a bunch of times in Confusion, and ultimately we get taken down. Okay, so we need to be stronger then because we'll definitely struggle in the next phase of the game if we are towing here. I head to the Sky Pillar to train and gain some levels, hopeful that it'll make a difference. Even with a beneficial special defence nature, it's not doing us much good and that lesser attack is probably making things a little tougher than they need to be. But all we can do is grind up and hope for the best. Sky Pillar isn't a bad place to grind actually, ignoring the Sableye anyway. There's Golbat, Bayonet and Claydol all to knock out for decent experience. I thought things were going too well after the Psychic Gym for sure, but here we are. All we can do is keep going. I'll try again soon, but I reckon level 80 to beat Juan. At least. I do get to that level and then I wander back to face him. Now, we are at level 80 here and we lose in the cruelest possible fashion. I thought I'd gotten away with it, but nope, no idea. We're still slower than Love Disc, and that is exceptionally worrying. We get tagged with a Water Pulse, but we do shrug it off and down it with Return. We are faster than Celio, and we do one hit that before Crawdont is third. And this is where it starts to go wrong, as it survives return and then hits a crit crab hammer that lands us on 5 HP. Are you frigging kidding me? He heals it, but we take it down with metal claw and return, going for the former in the hopes of a buff. 
Kingdra is out next. It survives return and hits Ice Beam, which doesn't knock us out at low health. And we've got him as he heals and we take it out with two more returns. All we have to do is knock Whiskash out and we have won. Unfortunately, it survives return on a sliver and ends us with Earthquake. Oh, nuts. So close. I am going to get a few more levels. Here is the thing. We were so close to knocking both Crawdont and Whiskash out in one hit. And that would probably have made a massive difference to the way this played out. So, I'll grind up a bit and then come back. I just don't want to do the water gym puzzle more times than I have to. Plus, it is handy training for the last charge of the game because I'm starting to think we'll probably need to be max level for Wallace. At level 85, I make a return and we will see if this is a tipping point. If the last attempt was close, it shouldn't be too bad here. I think we should win on this attempt. I wonder if Love Disc is still faster. Let's go and find out. Actually, 44 levels higher and we do finally outspeed Love Disc, which is exactly as ridiculous as it sounds. We down it with return and it means we don't get hit with Water Pulse at the start. Celio is second and we take it down with return. We do the same thing on the next turn to Crawdont, which means we don't have to worry about Crab Hammer, unlike last time. Kingdra does survive our return and blasts us with Water Pulse, which thankfully doesn't confuse us because that would probably have made things difficult. We've then got a series of turns where he tries to heal it up, only for us to keep battering it back down with return and really we've got him caught in a trap once again that he cannot escape and eventually he runs out of healing items. Whiskash is last, we down it with return for the victory. Moving on. I do need to look at my moves. We've got Wally ahead and he has a Magneton which is probably going to be rough to beat with our current move set. Now, I could learn Earthquake, but the problem is what to replace. It might have to be Iron Defense, you know. We've not been using it, and given most of the Elite Four do special damage with their stab types, I can't see it being too helpful. Earthquake is a powerful move, though there's not a whole lot it will be super effective against in the Elite Four. Wallace's Tentacruel is about it. Let's jump into the fight with Wally then and see how this goes. After the water gym, this is easy as we down Altaria with Rock Tomb, it landing first time, for once, which I am pleasantly surprised about. Next is Roselia and we take that down with a single return, so far so good. Magneton is third and we smash that with Earthquake for a victory. Delcati is fourth and that is an easy win with return before Gardevoir is last and it's a small matter to simply end it with a crit return to gain the win and move on further into Victory Road. We make it through to the Pokemon League and here are our stats at level 88. Well, what can I say? Defence is good, attack is decent despite our nature. Special defence could be better I guess, but I don't suppose it's too bad. Speed, meh, I don't actually know how useful that'll be. We've only just hit three figures and I'm terrified that something deadly outspeeds us. Sydney shouldn't be a problem, the Intimidate from Mighty Ina at the start aside. Phoebe is Phoebe and she's always going to cause massive issues with that team of hers. Glacier I think will be a real challenge with that wall rain. And Drake, I can see Salamance coming out later in the fight which might be what saves us. But I'm worried about both Kingdra and Flygon. And Wallace, yeah that's going to be worrying. Take your guesses on if you think we can do this at this level or not right now, folks. Dark Trainer Sydney is up first and he has two grass types, a water type and the intimidating Mightyena. Shouldn't be too bad, I suppose, but I don't think it's necessarily that easy. Let's throw down and find out. Oh dear. We can't one-hit Mightyena thanks to the Intimidate and it survives return which is horrifically bad since we immediately get hit with Sand Attack, the bane of my existence. We do finish it off with Metal Claw though. We two hit Crawdont with return while it only goes for Swords Dance which is a relief. I wish we could learn Swords Dance, that would make things so much easier. 
Captain is third, and this is where it starts to go bad. As we miss return, thank you, Sand Attack, and get hit with Cotton Spore, which lowers our speed. We land a return at the second attempt and drop it into red health, but he heals it, and we promptly start getting lamped with needle arms that do decent damage, thanks to our less than ideal special defence. We do land a metal claw for decent damage, but never come close to landing another, as it misses several times in a row, and thanks to a crit, we go down hard. Not good. More grinding then. I come back at level 90. Curious if that will give us much more of an advantage. I'm not betting heavily on it, but we will have to see. It goes better in the sense that we win, but it is such a kick in the ass mentally that I'm annoyed. We get intimidated and sand attacked by Mighty Ina, who survives our return. We land a metal claw on it after he heals, but he switches Mighty Ina out before we can deal the killing blow with our next attack, and he brings Crawdons in. Remember, metal claw is not 100% accurate at the best of times. We do get an attack rise to reset to normal when we hit metal claw on Crawdons, and then we finish it with return. My pleasure is momentary, though, when Mighty Ina comes out and we miss more Metal Claws on it and get Sand Attacked again. Three Metal Claws missing before finally we connect one to take it down. Captain is a pain as it survives return, but lands several Needle Arms until finally we connect a Metal Claw to take it down. Shiftry is also a pain as it survives return and hits Torment and Swagger as well as extra sensory, laying into us with all of its attacks. We do hit ourselves in confusion, but eventually we do manage to land the requisite blow to take it down. Absol, we miss two returns and two earthquakes in a row, as it hits us with rock slides that we shake off before starting to power up with swords dance. It gets two of them off before finally we land the earthquake that ends it to give us the win. How much PP did I waste there? Too many is the answer, and I have to think that this isn't going to be a winning run because of it. The things aren't going to get easier, as Phoebe is next, and I don't have a move to buff while the Dusclops does the first turn protect, so I am going to have to waste an attacking move. That's most irritating. We get the double whammy with it at the start of the fight, and as Dusclops has pressure as an ability, this is doubly annoying. Doubly annoying, double whammy. We go for Metal Claw while it protects, and then Earthquake on the second turn, but it succeeds with Protect once again. I call her a word I don't really want to repeat on the channel. I nearly said podcast, and I wrote it down in the script for some reason, before we down it with two Metal Claws following shortly after, though we do get hit with Shadow Punch. The second Dusclops goes down to a Crit Metal Claw, and I'll take that all day long. Bayonet, number one, hits Shadow Ball after we miss Metal Claw and then survives a second one on red health before hitting Faint Attack. She heals and we take it down with Earthquake. We do the same to the second Bayonet, one hitting it with Earthquake before Sableye is the last opponent. And once again, Earthquake for the win. Glacier then, and this could be interesting. Sure, we have an advantage in theory, having both rock and steel moves, but that latter one might not be as useful, given most of her team is also part water. So yes, probably not time for her to pull out the flag of surrender. First attempt goes badly. We want to hit Celio number one with rock tomb, and then the move pulls off a shock as it lands twice in a row to put Walrein in red health. Unfortunately, it then crits Surf to end us, which was pretty unfortunate. Could we survive a Surf if it didn't crit? That's the question, ain't it? Let's try this again. I need an answer to that question. For the second attempt in a row, we get one hit crit by Walrein. Really? What is it, a fast Pokemon in Gen 1? That's really not good. Third attempt goes better. Much, much, much better. Though in fairness, it really couldn't go much worse than the last two tries. We land Rock Tomb on Sea Leo, as return isn't quite enough to one-hit the Sea Lion, and that's not a good thing to see before Walrein comes out. Rock Tomb lands twice in a row, that's actually impressive, 
and puts it on red health before it lands surf. It doesn't crit this time, miraculously, and lands us on 78 hit points. She heals and we take it down with Metal Claw and return because I don't want to gamble on Rock Tomb's accuracy. Next is Glalie and we take it down with Metal Claw before the second Celio is out and we take it down with Rock Tomb. I always figured in Gen 3 there's more chance of a lottery win than Rock Tomb landing three times in a row but here we are. Glalie number 2 is faster and goes for Hail. We miss Metal Claw and then on the next turn we get blasted with Ice Beam. It doesn't do too much though and we drop it with Metal Claw at the second attempt for the win. Drake, normally a hard opponent but I am not sure how well do here. I think Flygon and Kingdra will be the key battles. Anything else I think we'll be fine with but those two are incredibly dangerous as either Earthquake or Surf will hurt us badly. Shellgon is friggin irritating at the start as we keep swinging Metal Claws at it and it keeps spamming Protect. It could be worse, I guess, if we were hit with Rock Tomb, but no, it manages to use Protect about four times. We can too hit that with Metal Claw, but we never get the attack buff. Eventually, it goes down. Kingdra survives return and goes for Dragon Dance, making it faster than us on the next turn, and it hits Surf, which does massive damage, but we can take it out at the second attempt. Flygon survives return and then, thanks to Surf, we've got no chance of surviving Earthquake and we go down. I think I know what I need to do. And no, it's not Grind, but I can see it coming for Wallace for sure. The issue there was Kingdra getting faster. If only I had a way of stopping it from being faster than us. There are a couple of attempts that are false starts as we get hit with Rock Tomb from Shelgon, which dooms us before we even begin. Being slower for the full fight gives us no chance. And then we get the one. Shelgon spams protect and we land a metal claw eventually, trying to swing another attack to get the finishing blow. Then, and this is crucial, he switches into Kingdra who tanks the metal claw. But we get the attack raise and we can take it down with return. Flygon is inexplicably faster this time, thanks to what I can only assume is a speed tie, but thanks to the attack rise, we take it out with one return. We fight Shellgon again and it spams Protect, failing on the second turn, but we miss our Metal Claw. Thankfully, we land that move shortly after though to end it. Two to go. Salamance is fourth and we are slower, but we survive Flamethrower, and our Rock Tomb lands to take it down in one hit, which is absolutely massive before Altaria is outlast. And once again, we land Rock Tomb to end it as a threat. Only one fight left then. How bad is this going to be? So, Wallace, a moment ago, I asked the question, how bad is this going to be? I think on a scale of 1 to 10, I reckon it's going to be somewhere about 11. We might survive one or two hits, but I think it's going to be a rough ask to do more. And there are some absolutely brutal opponents ahead. None of them are going to be easy. I think we will struggle to one hit most of his team. Our first effort goes badly. We do decent damage to Waylord, and I even try to get the attack boost by using some Metal Claws when its health goes low. But we never get it, and as he uses the full restore... We've been hit by two water spouts at this point and I figure I'll fight on and see how far we can go. Mind you, not very is the answer as he, rather unhelpfully, goes for Gyarados next and as a result we get two hits by Earthquake after Rock 2 misses and I'm not even sure that it would have one hit had it landed. So, I have a few options. Go and grind, try a few more times to see if things get better or go for double team. I think of these choices, I think the last one sounds kind of appealing, if I'm honest, so I might make a try or two with that and see how it goes. I make many, many, many attempts that turn out to be false starts. We go down in a variety of ways and eventually I decide that I'm going to use my rare candies to boost up to level 97 and hope that this gives me an edge I need to be able to win. There is one effort where you get to Ludicolo, but that's not good enough. 
eventually and it is on our second attempt at level 97 this happens now i discover that if we use return and metal claw we can put waylord on red health without knocking it out now the first time we do this it isn't ideal because he's going to heal straight away but if we do it again all while getting hit with water spouts keep in mind we can get it to the point where a single water spout does very little damage and since that's the most dangerous move it uses on us then that is an ideal time to start double teaming now as a strategy this isn't perfect and if i wasn't so clinically unbothered about going out and grinding again i wouldn't bother but it's a real adrenaline rush when you do have the six double teams up and i don't mean that in a good way it is time consuming for sure but when it comes off it's pretty dang fantastic when we've got the six double teams up, I take Waylord down with Metal Claw, hoping for an attack buff that never comes. Gyarados is next, and we do two hit that with Return, but it misses two Earthquakes in the interim, and each time one misses, it is nervy stuff. I don't think my heart can take much more of this. Tentacruel is third, and like Gyarados, it is faster than us, but unlike Gyarados, we have a super effective way of dealing with it, and we smash an Earthquake into it after it misses Hydro Pump. Ludicolo is fourth, and it is also a two-hit with return. The only sort of counter-attack it does on us is Double Team, and I can't say a thing about that as a strategy, given I am pinning my hopes on my own version of that move. My low tick is 5th and this is annoying. I go for Earthquake this time and it does just over half. We are faster, thankfully. A second Earthquake though doesn't end it and it unfortunately starts to spam Recover. Those were the last two Earthquake PPs I had too. So, I switch to Return and Metal Claw attacks, desperately trying to get an attack buff. But Metal Claw proves to be as notoriously unreliable as it has all game. There is one nervy moment when Surf does land and just as we've gotten up to full health too. But we don't get hit again and we can hurt it with more returns after it finally eats the berry. I try even more Metal Claws but still no damage buff. And eventually we smash into it with return for a victory. Last is Whiskash, and this is where I fell at the last attempt. We do over half with Return, and all it has to do is miss Earthquake, and we've won. And that duly happens, as the move goes wide, and another Return takes down the Mudfish, giving us the knockout and the victory, and finally, at long, long, long last, we have won the run, we've beaten the champion, and despite May showing up at the end to horn in on our parade, we can go and enter the Hall of Fame for eternal notoriety. Well, that got brutal at the end, though it wasn't entirely unexpected, I will say that. I'm exhausted after those efforts versus Wallace, it took far too many of them. Emerald is a hard game to solo, I'll say that. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. As always, if you did, please leave a like, comment away and subscribe if you haven't already done so. It's good for the almighty algorithm. And again, if you have any ideas for future challenges, head to the comments section down below or follow the links in the description to my Twitter or my Discord. Still trying to grow them, but it is a slow process. Join me again this time next week for another challenge as we see if I can beat Pokemon White 2 with just a single peed of. And if this was bad, that one might be worse. We'll find out. Outro time. Not much to say, just more of the same. Got a few things lined up, need to finish sorting stuff out for my holiday. That's getting ever closer and it will feel weird not doing one of these challenges over the course of a week. But I suppose I could really do with the break. So I'm looking forward to that. It will be nice not being ruled by YouTube commitments for a period of time. They do say absence makes the heart grow fonder. Meh, there's two more challenges before then. I am going to jump off here. As always, thanks for watching folks. This has been Once a Future Gamer and this has been Pokemon Emerald with a single Aaron. Take care now, have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye bye now. So long. See ya.